This is KGW News at 5. And thank you for being with us. We're going to start with a breaking development in a deadly apartment fire in Northeast Portland. So investigators saying now they do believe fireworks started that fire on the morning of the 4th of July. KGW's Mike Benner joins us with the latest. Mike. Well, Dan, we've been out here at the scene for a couple of hours now. We've spoken to a number of people. Not one of them is terribly surprised to learn that fireworks are to blame for this deadly fire. That said, it's not any easier to come to terms with. Everyone just beyond upset that a few hours of fun claimed two innocent lives. Again, this fire broke out in the early morning hours of July 4th. Firefighters arrived to find a lot of fire and smoke. Reports of people jumping from balconies as well. Again, two people were killed, 31-year-old Seth Thompson and 31-year-old Richard Gramillion. A third person, a 25-year-old woman, was critically injured. In addition to that, a number of people are now without homes. Investigators did not get a good up-close look at the scene until yesterday morning. They worked for many hours and have now ruled fireworks to be the cause of this fire. We spoke with authorities just a short time ago. Take a listen. It's, it's sad that, that the loss of life is tragic. Uh, no matter what the cause. We as firefighters always feel that fires are preventable. Um, this one in particular, now that we know it's fireworks. All right, back out here live at the Heidi Manor Apartments in Northeast Portland. It's worth mentioning that there are a number of fundraisers uh, for the folks impacted by this fire. You can find more information on our website, kgw.com. And they will, they will need that help. Mike Benner, thank you so much. Also tonight, a call for answers and accountability following Oregon's deadly heat wave. Tonight, there's a big demand for change in air conditionerless apartments where the most, most vulnerable people lived. Pat Doris has the details for us. During the worst of the heat wave, a home health care worker told KGW News a client's apartment on the sixth floor of this building, called the Northwest Tower, was 109 degrees inside. The building has no central air conditioning. Yeah, it's, I mean, I think it's a really big problem that we need to address. Melissa Unger is executive director of SEIU Local 503, which represents home health care workers, including the one who told us about the super hot apartment. She said it's common sense to add central air now. And making sure that the, uh, the housing and um, the buildings that we are doing for our most vulnerable, seniors and people with disabilities, that it has um, air conditioning is really important. Home Forward is a public agency and the largest provider of affordable housing in Oregon. It serves the poor and the vulnerable. It owns 72 buildings, including Northwest Tower. Most were built before you needed much air conditioning in Oregon. Now of those 72, only one has central air. Three deaths at Home Forward properties are suspected to be connected to the heat wave. Two of the deaths were in high-rise apartment buildings without central air. But the executive director said the agency will not install central air in any of the buildings. I asked why not. Why not come forward and demand that the federal government, state and local governments who have huge budgets this year supply enough money for retrofitting for central air conditioning. Some of these you, these apartments are 13 stories tall and there's no air conditioning. How can people be expected to stay there, you know, for the next heat wave? It's an important question and you know, it harkens to my earlier answer about the exercise we have to go through in terms of figuring out, you know, all of the possible disaster scenarios that we have to prepare for and what investment is required to, to do that. He said Home Forward is retrofitting its buildings to withstand earthquakes and that there's simply not enough money for something like central air. This really reflects um, the degree to which we prioritize making these investments in our own citizens as a country and we need to do better. I also took the question to Multnomah County Commissioner Sharon Myron, an emergency room doctor who knows better than most the danger that 109 degree apartment posed. Absolutely, that is, um, that is horrifying. And uh, that is exactly the kind of situation that we need to, um, to be able to identify and, uh, and prevent where we can. But she's not yet ready to call for central air in places like Northwest Tower. While we look at more of these events, um, you know, there is absolutely a, will be a need, I think, for more air air conditioning units, both um, wall units, central air, 
But what's really important is to take a step back and analyze where that would be the most appropriate and effective response. The commissioner said she's waiting for a county report that will look at what went right and what went wrong during the deadliest heat wave in Oregon history. The heat wave highlighted a major problem in those big public apartment buildings. No centralized air conditioning, and they hold some of the most vulnerable people in our area. We're going to keep asking tough questions until something is done to better protect those people for the next time around. In Northeast Portland, Pat Doris, KGW News. Thank you to Pat. Fire season has started and right now crews are battling fires in southern Oregon. The largest of them is the bootleg fire in Klamath County. As we speak, more resources are actually headed to that fire. It's currently at more than 16,000 acres with 0% containment. Right now, a couple of nearby areas are under be ready or get set evacu evacuation notices. Our Christine Pitawanich is in southern Oregon with an update. Here in Medford, if you look around, the sky is hazy. That's because of smoke, mainly from two fires in the region, the Jack Fire in the Roseburg area and Bootleg Fire near Chiloquin. You know, the fire when we were called out was only about 3,000 acres. But overnight, the Bootleg Fire exploded and grew more than 13,000 acres due to the hot and very dry conditions. It's threatening homes. So right now we believe there's about a hundred homes up there or structures in the area really between um, the community of Chilicon and the fire. Herr uh, Zutendijk is with the Oregon State Fire Marshal's incident management team. He says the fire is about 15 miles from Chiloquin. His crews from Marion, Yamhill and Polk counties are tasked with finding and protecting homes and other structures. The fire is right up against several of these structures. Uh, so it's really close to some of those homes already. He says the terrain is rough and homes in this rural area are scattered. So that's what uh, right now and today is, is the big focus is on finding out where all these properties and homes and buildings are located at. And that's going to be especially important given the weather that's expected. We do have a red flag warning here in the area. That's, you know, from about two o'clock on until about eight is what they're predicting. The wind is supposed to help us and push the fire east and a little bit north. Even so, the potential for gusting wind is still cause for concern. The other unpredictable part of it is, is those winds are going through valleys and gullies. Which could impact the wind direction and fire movement. Trying to get this fire under control because that's, we know there's more fires going to be you know, between now and, and the end of fire season. Of course, there are also wildland firefighters on the ground and in the air trying to contain that fire. But wow, what a difficult job in the dry, hot conditions, because when a fire does break out in these types of conditions, it tends to grow and move that much faster. In Medford, Christine Pitawanich, KGW News. Christine, thank you. And moving slightly northwest from that bootleg fire is the Jack Fire near Roseburg. It has burned more than 4,000 acres in that area. The fire broke out east of Glide Monday afternoon, and so far, close to 200 structures are threatened by this blaze. Firefighters from other Oregon counties are helping to protect them. A total of 327 personnel are in that area assisting with the firefighting. The wildland crews are working on uh, containment lines, um, uh, an indirect and a direct attack on the fire. We're taking the time to, uh, where we can, assist with creating defensible space around those areas where feasible with the residents. A 1,400-mile stretch of North Umpqua Highway is closed because of the fire. ODOT says flames are burning along the highway corridor and destroying guardrails and signs, causing rocks and flaming debris to fall onto the road. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Pfizer announced today it will seek approval from U.S. regulators for a third dose of its COVID vaccine. It says an additional dose could boost protection against the Delta variant. The variant is now the dominant strain in the U.S. CDC data shows it now accounts for around 52 percent of new COVID-19 infections. Research also shows two vaccines, two doses still offer strong variant protection. 
the heat wave and 4th of July holiday really stretched area hospitals and emergency rooms thin at Peace Health Southwest Washington Medical Center. ER visits went from an average of 167 a day in March to 209 a day in June. A daily visit really uh, daily visits also spiked last week with our heat wave and holiday. The director of Peace Health's Vancouver Emergency Department says it's a challenging time for patients and providers. It's really difficult for us because um, we know these people need care. We know that they're waiting a long time. And in this part of the country, uh, waits like this just are unheard of. Other hospital systems are in that same boat. They all say if you truly have a medical emergency, go to the ER. The most serious cases will be seen first. But if you don't necessarily have an emergency, only a, an urgent medical problem, go to an urgent care clinic or your regular doctor as soon as you can. Multnomah County residents are getting an extension on rent relief. Last month, Oregon passed a bill to protect tenants from eviction for non-payment for 60 additional days. That started June 25th and covers people who have applied for rental assistance. Well, now Multnomah County specifically is adding another 30 days of protection for a total of 90 days. Renters must have proof that they have applied for help in order to be eligible. President Biden has picked Oregon Governor Kate Brown to serve on the administration's Council of Governors. The council features 10 bipartisan governors. The goal is for states to be able to work with the federal government on issues like defense, disaster preparedness and cybersecurity.